2021 was another year gravely impacted by COVID. But at the European Space Agency, work has continued, and ESA can look back on a year in which the agency once more showed its excellence and outstanding ambition. In science, ESA's year ends on a high note, with the long-anticipated launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, in partnership with NASA and CSA. This cutting-edge space telescope will be launched on top of an Ariane 5 from Europe's spaceport. Webb is designed to answer questions about our universe and to make breakthrough discoveries in all fields of astronomy. 2021 also saw the double Venus flyby of Solar Orbiter and Bepi Colombo, whereby both spacecraft en route to their destinations did a flyby of our hottest planet, only 33 hours apart, a first. But on the ground, new missions are being prepared as well. This summer, ESA's new space probe, JUICE, which stands for Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, successfully completed rigorous thermal tests at ESA's STEC facility. The mission will launch to Jupiter in 2023, and it will study the planet and its icy moons, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede. For ESA's exciting ExoMars mission, High-altitude drop tests were successfully executed in Kiruna, Sweden, and later in Oregon in the US. Testing the parachutes needed to ensure a gentle touchdown for ExoMars on the surface of the Red Planet. For human spaceflight, ESA astronauts Thomas Pesquet and Matthias Maurer both made the journey to the International Space Station, ISS, in 2021. Thomas departed in April for his second long-duration mission named Alpha, and he was the first ESA astronaut to fly in the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. During his stay, another marvel of European technology came to the International Space Station, the European robotic arm, ERA. This robotic arm can move hand over hand on the outside of the Russian laboratory module, Nauka, and can be used for inspections, bringing scientific instruments outside of the airlock and aid astronauts during spacewalks on board the ISS, Toma was involved in the setup of ERA, and in October, he became the fourth European commander of the space station. He returned to Earth in November, a few days before German astronaut Matthias Maurer launched to the ISS for his six-month mission named Cosmic Kiss. Ever looking forward to the future, ESA opened applications for a new class of astronauts on the 31st of March. And by the time the vacancies closed in June, over 22,000 aspiring astronauts had applied. It was also the first time ESA had a vacancy for an astronaut with a physical disability, to which over 200 people replied. Now the candidates will go through several screening stages, and in 2022, a new class of astronauts will be revealed to the world. The ambition of ESA is to bring the first European to the surface of the Moon before the end of the decade. To achieve this, ESA continues to work closely with NASA in the development of the Artemis program. In 2021, a second European service module, ESM-2, arrived at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, while the ESM-1 was integrated with the Orion capsule and stacked in preparation for next year's maiden flight. It is also ESA's responsibility to keep securing independent access to space for Europe, with two new upcoming launches, in November, the last Vega was launched from Europe's spaceport to be replaced from 2022 onwards by the new and improved Vega C launcher. The development of the new Ariane 6 launcher is also well underway, with more tests across several sites in Europe and in Kourou. In September, the Ariane 6 launch pad was inaugurated, bringing the maiden flight of this flexible heavyweight launcher ever closer. 2021 was another important year for Galileo, the most accurate and only publicly owned satellite navigation system in the world. In November, a Soyuz launched from Europe's spaceport, carrying two more Galileo satellites into orbit. These satellites were the first of 12 more first-generation Galileo satellites, known as Batch 3, and they fill in empty spots in the constellation and offer replacements for satellites which are end of life. Meanwhile, ESA continues to work on a second generation of more powerful and versatile software-defined Galileo satellites. The way towards this innovative software-defined satellite design 
was paved by UTELSAT Quantum, which was launched in July on board an Ariane 5. Quantum is the first of these software-defined satellites which can be reprogrammed in orbit, responding to changing market demands during their lifetimes. In all these missions, ESA is at the forefront of space technology. It has the ambition to remain there and to excel even more. This aspiration is shared by ESA's new Director General, Josef Asbaka, who took the helm on the 1st of March. He set out to define new and ambitious priorities and goals for ESA in the coming years with Agenda 2025, outlining the challenges in maintaining and growing Europe's role in the space economy. To achieve this, close collaboration with the EU is essential. And in June, ESA and the EU signed the Financial Framework Partnership Agreement defining the roles and responsibilities of all partners, the European Commission, the new EU space programme agency, USPA, and ESA, which has a proven track record of excellence and responsibility. During the ministerial meeting of ESA member states in November, it was agreed that for Europe to thrive, they must act now and accelerate the use of space, and three accelerators to bring Europe's space ambitions to the next level were defined. These three accelerators are Space for a Green Future, Rapid and Resilient Crisis Response, and Protection of Space Assets. The Space for a Green Future accelerator is closely linked to Earth observation and climate change, one of ESA's focal points. The measurements provided by the Sentinel satellites of Europe's Copernicus program, or by the ESA Earth explorers, continue to give scientists and policymakers the information they need to assess climate change and the health of our planet. The importance of climate change on the future of humanity was also stressed at the Climate Conference in Glasgow in November, where ESA was also present, showcasing its space-based climate action. ESA can end another year of keeping Europe at the forefront of space technology, using it to improve the lives of people on the ground, to innovate and to learn about the universe and our own planet.